my name is Angela. I'm the office manager at Above and Beyond. And I wanted to share a little of my journey of how I got to the office. Um, but more importantly, there's a reason you guys found us here tonight. We wanted to welcome you, and we're glad that you're here. Um, something sparked your interest, whether it was your health is a concern or someone maybe that you loved has a health concern, or whether you're here just for optimal wellness, you're going to leave here with information you probably have never heard before. Um, I'm a little raw tonight. Um, I just got news of a family member who is extremely stubborn and never put herself first. And I know, especially a lot of you women in here, we put everyone before ourselves and we take care of ourselves last. And I hope by the end of my story tonight that you guys look at your health and how you prioritize your health a little differently tonight. Um, so someone that I love dearly um, is caring for someone and had a mini stroke and didn't tell me until two days later. And I've been pressuring her to take care of her health and put herself first because I saw her health decline this last month. And it hurt me to the core. And family is the hardest to help. And you can't take care of yourself when an illness or disease happens. You have to be proactive and take care of your health before something happens. Um, and I want to lead with this story. Um, a lot of us base our health on how we feel. If we feel okay, we assume that we're okay. And if there's anything you get from hearing me tonight and you walk out of this door, do not base your health, your health on how you feel. There's silent, there silent diseases that come that don't tell us that they're coming. Um, my dad, 49 years old, stubborn Italian, if any of you know any of them, and I said, Dad, you're about to turn 50. If you can just go get a physical, I wanted to make sure everything is OK. He fought me on it. And I was very persistent. And he eventually gave in and went and had a physical. So he had blood work, EKG, um, chest x-ray, and stress tests. Came back normal. So all his tests were negative. And two months later, he got a call that he had stage 4 cancer. Two separate primaries, king, a king, kidney and lung. And we, as a family, knew what we were taught, that when someone comes down with cancer and illness, you go to the doctor. And we went to tradi traditional doctors. And we trusted in what their plan of action would be. And that was chemotherapy, radiation therapy. Um, eventually had brain surgery. And within one year, my dad was blind and paralyzed in a wheelchair, where I saw the strongest person that I know helpless and I couldn't even help him. And my dad died in bed with me a year later. And I'm here to tell you that heart attack, stroke, and cancer are silent killers. They don't tell you that they're coming. And unfortunately, my dad was an example of that. And 70 to 80% of all illnesses and diseases are preventable. But we take, in society, a reactive approach where we think we're inevitable and nothing's going to happen to us until that moment comes. And my dad had that aha uh -huh, uh -huh moment. And that moment was too late for him to turn back his health and change anything. And he had his whole life to live. So now seeing another one of my family members go through something, as a medical community, what do we do to get this message across to the public? That medication isn't the answer. Medication isn't making us healthy. It's making us sick. It's not normal to grow old and have high blood pressure and have diabetes and high cholesterol and end up in an old age home. It's normal to get old and die from old age. But what is the percentage of the people you know that actually experience that? So I hope something switches your mindset tonight when you hear what true health care is about. That insurance card, that insurance that we pay every month, when is the last time that that insurance card actually increased your health? Because I actually thought of that the other day, and I couldn't think of one time. So be proactive. Take care of your health now while you have the chance. Um, to let you know how I got here, I was a patient with Above and Beyond for three years prior to working here. And I had a journey since I was in elementary school where I was consistently sick, from allergies to asthma. I was hospitalized every three months. 
Um, I was on four pills a month since I was in the second grade. I saw an allergist one time a week for 17 years to get allergy injections in my arm. Uh, the doctors called me the bubble girl because they didn't know how I was able to leave the house and function like a normal child. Um, my rescue inhaler that you're supposed to take for asthma that was for emergencies, my emergencies happen five to eight times a day. So all the steroids and the medication gave me osteopenia in my hip. Um, I had bronchitis twice a year, pneumonia once a year, sinus infection so severe I was bedridden for 10 days at a time. And my childhood memory going, growing up was doctor hopping. And it was one medication after another. And the medications did not get down to the root cause. It didn't heal. It masked it and eventually led to other ailments. Um, I tried uh, conventional methods to heal. And when I was, I was in the medical field and I worked for a physiatrist who's a non-operative back specialist. And working there, I developed back pain. So severe I couldn't walk and I knelt at my desk for eight to 10 hours at a, a time. And it affected my lifestyle dramatically because I was a personal trainer and I also competed in fitness. So that lifestyle component, I couldn't do what my passion was and what I loved to do. And the doctor did what most do if you have back or neck pain. Um, I did physical therapy for two years straight. I did epidural injections, muscle relaxers, painkillers. Um, you name it, I tried it. The last resort was I should see a chiropractor, which I did. And I saw three different ones along my journey. And the reason why that is so profound in my story is because I was never educated along the way of what true chiropractic is and what it does. And I saw a pain relief doctor, which kind of puts the Band-Aid over what you're dealing with. It doesn't get down to the root cause. Where corrective base, which is what our office is, gets down to the root cause and comes up with a plan specifically for you to get you to your state of health. And looking back, it made sense to me why along my journey I would feel a little bit of relief, but then I would take 10 steps back. So if any of you in your own journey have felt a little relief and then backpedaled, I get it. I was there. I know what you're feeling. I was helpless. I was hopeless. I got to a point where I just said, I'm done. I give up. If I have to accept that this is how my life is going to be, then I have to work my life around it. And it wasn't until the day my acupuncturist at the time said, you need to see the doctors at Above and Beyond. I will be honest with you, I was the most skeptical person that probably walked through their doors because of my journey, because of working in the medical field and experiencing the journey that I went on. And I thought chiropractic was about back and neck pain. Um, when I walked through the doors, I got love and hope that I never had at any facility. And one of the doc, Dr. Rogers said to me, the power that made the body has the potential to heal the body. Guys, whatever you're dealing with today, if your body created it, your body can heal it. The first thing that I needed to acknowledge was I had to know 100% that my body could heal. And then the rest was easy. Within three months, I had a glimpse of hope. Within one year, my life did a 180. And I say that because I walked in there for back and neck pain. Did it help me? Absolutely. Did it get me back to the things I love? Absolutely. What I didn't know is that when your body functions without interference, it heals. Every medication I was on to this day, seven years later, I'm off, and I have not been hospitalized ever since. Um, so that's a testimony to show you what the body has the capability and the power to do. So I hope to inspire you to give you hope that your body can heal too. Um, so that's enough of me. Um, you guys are here to meet Dr. Roger, who has been an angel to me and to many. And this is his passion and mission. He wants to be able to spread the message to as many people as we possible can of what true health care is all about and how your body can heal. Um, he is a number one best-selling author and has been seen on all the major media outlets um, to spread this message. So without further ado, as he's ready, <laughs> Dr. Roger. So whenever I see somebody in need, I got to help them right away, you know? And you're never late. You're always on time. 
okay? So it's okay. All I ask is that you just shut off your cell phone, that's all. That's all I ask people. All right, great. So, welcome everyone. Let's have uh, everyone who can stand up. I'd like you to all stand up for just a moment, okay? Great. You've been sitting down for some time now, right? We've got to move that body a little bit. Plus, Angela was just pulling on your heartstrings a little bit with her stories, wasn't she? So let's have you take your arms and bring them up into the sky. Good. And now what I want you to do is think of something that's been renting space in your mind that you've really been wanting to leave your mind, right? Like you've been a prisoner, maybe negative thoughts. Maybe you're the person that you work for is driving you crazy. Maybe your husband or wife is driving you bonkers. Maybe your kids are driving you nuts. Whatever that thought is, all right? So I want you to take a deep breath all the way in. Grab that thought and then breathe it out and say, ah. Good. Do it again. Deep breath all the way in. You didn't get it all the way out yet. And all the way out and say, ah. Good. And we're going to do that one more time. Deep breath all the way in. And all the way out and say, ah. Good. Now I want you to look at somebody at your table, and I want you to say something that's going to brighten up their day. Like this lady right here. If I woke up to her, I go, wow, you have such a beautiful smile. You could brighten up in a room. Thank you. Right? <laughs> so look at somebody at your table, right? Pick a partner at your table, and say something that's going to brighten up their day. Everybody, play along. Awesome. Now I want you to look at somebody at your table and point to them and say, you are amazing. You are amazing. Good. Now point to that person and say, I am amazing. I am amazing. All right. Now look at that person and say, you are beautiful. You are beautiful. Now look at that person and say, I am beautiful. I am beautiful. All right. I'm in a room with a bunch of amazing and beautiful people. Have a seat. So I love to do that, right? Because do you see, when Angela was telling her story, when Angela was telling her story about, can you, can you just have a seat? Yeah, can you just have a seat? Thank you. Thank you. When Angela was telling, yeah, you could sit. There you go. When Angela was telling her story about her father, or the person who just had a mini stroke, did that pull on your hearts a little bit? Pull out my heart, you know. I just heard about it just now about the one who had the mini stroke. I'm going to find out what's going on in a second. But you see, emotion stands for energy in motion. You know what I say? Emotion stands for energy in motion. And we can always let a thought take us down one rabbit hole or take us up in faith. It's our choice, right? And we could become historians, and we could also think about a thought and let it replay and then tell everybody that we know about it. And then you finish telling everybody you know, and then you find somebody else to tell. Right? And you keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And you're always replaying the story, even to the same people over and over and over again. Right? Or you could begin to shift your state by doing things that I just taught you right now, which is what? Get up and do what? Move your body. Breathe. Grab the emotion, get it out of your body, not in. Yes? So just like you're in one state, you can shift your state that fast. It's so vitally important to do that. Because we know that emotional stress will lead to sickness and disease. Yes? We all know that. I mean, it's a fact. Stress will lead to sickness and disease, period. Most of the people who get really sick, it's because they're stressed. That's what happens. And it's coming one of three ways. It's either a physical stress, a chemical stress, or an emotional stress, or a combination of all three. And if you got emotional stress, does it tend to turn you down a hole where maybe you eat a ton of food, right, and you grab the wrong foods, or you starve yourself? One or the other. Is that adding another stress to your body? Of course. Physically, will that add another stress when, when you're emotionally stressed? Will it tighten up your body? Of course it does. And then you start moping, and when you do that, is your breath fuller, or is it more shallow? Shallow. So we got more life or less life running through our bodies? Less at that point, right? And when we, when we live that life for a period of time, in time, it begins to break you down. It's not the one time that it happens. It's in time. It's in time that it happens. Now, when it does and it builds up for a longer period of time, 
Now all this stress can lead to a dis-ease in your body, which will eventually lead to a disease. And then we begin to take medications, which we know has its purpose, right? Crisis situations, but nobody wants to be on medications for their entire life. Is there anybody? I don't know anybody. Look, I got tons of friends who are medical doctors, like, like this, like brothers of mine. And every one of them will tell you, none of us want to ever be on a medication if we could avoid it, right? So I don't know anybody who wants to be on a drug. So if we don't, do we want to live a reactive life or do we want to live a proactive life? Proactive. So you want to start your day every single morning by doing rituals that are going to begin to empower your life. So I got little, I have three daughters. I'm blessed. I got three little angels, right? I got a 16-month-old, I have a, an 8-year-old, and I have a 10-year-old. And my children, every single morning, when they wake up, they'll plant their feet on the ground, they'll stretch, and they'll say, thank you, God, for another day on earth. Is that starting off your day on the right, on the right foot? Absolutely, right? I teach them affirmations, right? Do an affirmation. Bringing in good thoughts, starting off your day, right? Visualizing what your day is going to look like before it even happens. When you begin to do these type of things, it begins to set yourself up, just like doing your bed, not leaving your bed undone because you're like, oh, I'm going to come home and sleep in it anyway. No, no, do your bed. Get it ready because when you come home, you have a sanctuary to come home to, right? You, if, you got, if you got clutter in your life, if you got clutter in your life and you're so stressed, look at your home, look at your cars, look at the places around you and see how much clutter you have in different places. Clean that stuff up and you'll clean up your life. Really simple tip right there, right? Trust me when I tell you that. Because whenever I get clutter in my life or I get really stressed, I go, oh, God, oh, now I see why my office is a mess over here. Like, why did I do that? And it's so simple to clean it up right as you do it. But no, we let things stack up in life. And it's the same exact thing with all the stressors that happen in your life. It's not the one that hits you. It's the one that we allow to be a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth. And then it's like that glass of water. It's not the first drop that makes it overflow, is it? It's right when it gets to that top, all of a sudden it starts to overflow. And then life begins to get overwhelming. So if we begin to bring in rituals every single day that are going to begin to empower you, inspire you, then when you live by those premises, life is a much better place, right? It's a much better place. So walk away with that tool right away, right? That's a gift. Now, chemically, what we put into our bodies are going to affect us as well, right? I mean, if we're always eating refined carbohydrates, white flour, sugars, potato chips, cookies, cakes, over and over and over again on a regular basis, well, what's going to happen? I mean, that's what our body's going to look like. Garbage in, garbage what? Garbage actually stays in and it pollutes. That's what it does. It creates a polluted environment, right? And when you do those type of things, what's it do to your energy levels? It affects you. What's it do to your moods? It affects you. And it may not be that one time, but, you know, usually 10 minutes after you ate it, you don't even remember what it even tasted like. So let's just make some better choices, right? And we'll teach you those type of things in our office, right, in our center. Because some of you were here because, hey, you want to lose some weight, right? Some of you are like, hey, I'm just sick of carrying this extra weight. Or, hey, my moods are affected. Or my sleep is affected. Or my energy is affected. Well, we're going to teach you that, right? We have systems in our wellness center that address that. We have something called Sprint Set Energizing Weight Loss System. And with that system, it begins to tackle the chemical components. It begins to detoxify the body. Upstream, downstream detoxification. Not just like your juicing fast that you would do, but in a full upstream, downstream, it's going to get rid of the heavy metals, get rid of toxins, clean up that liver, make sure that your blood sugar levels start to balance out, get those hormones functioning right, get the digestive system to start to heal up, and then lose that visceral fat, that dangerous fat, which will lead to heart disease, cancer, right? Will lead to type 3 diabetes, not just type 2. Anybody here know what type 3 diabetes is? Not my team. It's Alzheimer's. And as we get older, none of us want to develop that, do we? Right? And that's from that visceral fat that will begin to develop. That happens over time. But in order for us to really take care of our body, the first area we must always take a look at is how much life is truly running through our bodies. Can we all agree? If our body has less stress on it, are we healthier? Yes. If our bodies have more stress on it, we are sicker, right? You get it? All right, so when we begin to take a look at our life, when we were created, we were created with one organ in charge that's protected by bone, right, that God gave you, and it sits right here in your head, and you think with it, what's it called? Brain. Your brain, that's right. Your brain sends life intelligence and wisdom to the way that your heart is beating, 
your lungs are breathing, you're digesting food, your body's detoxifying, the way that you're able to see, smell, hear, taste, the way that you, your reproductive organs are working, the way that your blood pressure is regulated, the way that your blood sugar levels are regulated, the way that everything in your body is regulated. Can we see that? Because look, it sends this life intelligence and wisdom right down the spinal cord, and through these nerves, it sends life to every vital organ. Now, we're going to use this as an example. Look, the brain is sending life down the spinal cord, out to the heart, and we cut the nerve, and it runs right to your heart. What happens to you? You what? You die. That's right. So the opposite of death is life. So what's running through these nerves is life. This is the power, right? This is that power. This is God's intelligence and wisdom that's running through you. The power that made the body has the ability to heal the body too, right? But we've got to make sure that that power is running through it. If there's a disconnect here, there's no power, right? We cut this nerve. I can give you every single medication in the world. Are you coming back to life? No, because there's no life running through the body. But if you have life running through the body and we cut your skin, your body can form what? New skin. It'll clot and form new skin, right? That's intelligence, innate intelligence. Every one of you have that running through you right now because you're all breathing. You're all alive. Now, if we got pressure on the nerves and it's running to your heart or let's say your kidneys, you could develop something called high blood pressure. That's right. And most people who have high blood pressure take what? A medication. And how long do they take that blood pressure medication for? Most of them. For the rest of their life. Now, let me ask you a question. I'm, I think I'm going to... Everybody in this room is very smart. Do you think that you developed high blood pressure because your body is lacking that blood pressure medication? You're sure, right? Just, your body isn't lacking a medication, is it? No. There's a cause behind why you would ever develop hypertension. It's going to be a physical stress, a chemical stress, an emotional stress, or a combination. Yes or yes? yes. It's a fact. And anybody who argues that fact is just not knowledgeable enough. Because I know everybody in this room is super smart, and you all know that that's a true statement. And it's the same exact thing. Your body isn't lacking a migraine medication. Your body isn't lacking an opioid. Your body isn't lacking that purple Nexium pill. Your body isn't lacking anything. Your body's lacking health. That's what it is. You know, darkness is the absence of what? Light. Sickness is the absence of? Health, that's it. So we got to make better choices. You know, what are some of the choices that we can do better at? I'll give you one thing. A big micro trauma today that I'm seeing is causing severe damage in the spine at a young age like this young, we got a young little girl here. She's, what, nine years old maybe? Ten? Ten years old? Okay. What do these young children have today? Cell phones, tablets, iPads, right? So does everyone here, right? How do you look at them? You look down. So if you've seen me on any of the major TV networks like CBS, NBC, Fox, any of those, right, you'll see me talking about these components. Because people are looking down like this at cell phones all the time. When they do this, and your spine should come back like a banana, like a letter C in your neck. It's called the arc of life. I mean, just think about this. If you took a banana and you straightened it out, what would happen to the banana? Yeah, it would break, right? It'd smush, right? Why? Because you're putting more, more pressure, more stress on it. So if you have your spine, it should come back like a letter C, and you start to straighten it out, because here you are, you have this motion that you're looking down all the time for an average of three to four hours a day, which is the population in the US, that's what they're doing it for, right? If you're doing that over and over and over again, what happens? Well, your body's eventually going to break down. And now we start seeing more osteoarthritic activity happening. And it's not an aging process. It's a neglect process or doing the wrong activity over and over and over again. And that's what I see. Look, I've seen 300,000 patient visits walk through my doors. Not 3,000, not 30,000, 300,000. And when you see visit after visit coming through and you're re-examining and you're taking pictures of spines and you're, you're looking to see, hey, where's their damage going on? What's been happening in their lives? How is their life being affected from what they've been doing? And now we've got to shift these habits. I'm telling you what I see. And I see this regularly, and I'm seeing too much of this breakdown happening to young children. And if it's happening to them, who else is it happening to? To you. And you may not even realize it, right? You're just like, oh, I'm getting older. That's why I'm tired. Oh, I'm getting older. That's why my energy levels are low. Oh, I'm getting older, and that's why my sleep is affected. Oh, this is why I can't move as well as I need to. And you remember that day when it started. But see, it's not just that one micro trauma. There are many different micro traumas, like the way you carry your 
your pocketbooks or the way that you sit on your wallets or the way that you sit and watch TV or the way that you drive your car or all these different components that you do on a daily basis that you may not be aware of that in time it is breaking down your health. And what we're here to do is walk side by side with you and show you, hey, look, this is what we need to do, brother. This is what we need to do, sister, right, in order to improve and better your health. So based on your goals, because everybody here has their own goals, right, and based on our findings is going to be the recommendations that we truly make for each and every single one of you. And I got to tell you, this is so prevalent to me because when I take a look at this, I'll have people who come in who go, Doc, I feel completely healthy. I feel so good. I feel strong, you know? You know who that sounded like? My father. My father, old school man who brought us to this country to give us this American dream. I didn't speak a word of English coming to this country. Nothing. I had to bust my butt to become the man that I am today. My parents didn't speak English. My parents couldn't help me with school. Everything that I did was strictly learning and putting in the time and putting in the energy to become the man that I am. And I am studying to become a medical doctor, right? And I'll get into that story later, but I ended up not becoming a medical doctor because I do what I do now. But see, what happened is when my father came to me, my father based his health on how he felt. He comes to me with his blood work that showed they had a clean bill of health. And when I ran my test on him, which was, let's see how all these nerves are sending life to your vital organs. Because we have technology that Space Foundation approved that we use to determine what's going on, how much life is running to the vital organs of the body. Then what do we do? If we see that there was any challenges going on there, well, then I want to take some pictures of the spine. I want to see what's happening. Is it moving in the right direction? Is it moving in the wrong direction? Is it breaking down? Is there degeneration going on? Is there more interference going on than I expect going on? Why is this happening? How long has it been going on for? My dad, though, he really didn't even listen to any of this. He's like, ah, if my neck bothers me, if my shoulder bothers me, if my knee bothers me, if something bothers me, I'll take care of it. But I feel great. I feel strong. I'm in construction. I can do things you can't do. I can pick up things and put them down. Pick them up and put them down. <laughs> you get some of you caught on to that joke, right? But he, he really just didn't listen. And now what happens is we are Thursday night. We saw about around 150 people that day amongst me and my team. And I get a phone call, and it's my mother having a full-blown anxiety attack. Because my father, who didn't listen, and only based his health on how he felt or how he looked, had a massive heart attack. And I was telling him, Dad, you got some severe interference running right to your heart. I'm really concerned with what I see. And he wasn't listening. All it was was come over for dinner, come hang out. And of course I want to go out and have dinner with them. But he didn't listen. And I really caution people to listen and really be proactive when it comes to your health. Because what happened to him was not something I'd want to see anybody go through. See, what happened is I'm at that hospital, and look, he needed to be there. It was a crisis situation. In that situation, you don't come to me. That's a crisis situation. That's why we have hospitals, right? He needed to be there, and he was. He came out of the hospital. He's on tons of medications. He developed drug-induced diabetes from the medications. Three months later, I'm looking at my dad, and he's existing. He's not living. The man's not talking to anybody. He gets very depressed. He's not living a quality of life at all anymore. So when you begin to see your dad, your hero, break down like that, it's a very sad place to be. And I had a heart-to-heart -heart with his cardiologist, right? And I go, look, I speak to lots of doctors because we want to work as a team for you, right? And I want to work as a team for my dad. And I said, doc, I said, look, I get it. My dad's on these medications, totally understand, crisis situation. Okay. But we need to either shift the dosages or do something because the man is not himself at all at all. And he said, son, listen, your dad's going to have to be on these medications for the rest of his life. You all know that. You, know, you all know that. And I said, doc, listen, I get you want to manage this disease, but we need to do something better. We need to build his health. And we're not going to do that by just 
throwing a ton of these medications in. I get that they got their purpose, but we're going to work on getting them off to some of these medications, okay? Or just decreasing those dosages. Now, he wasn't having it. So now my, I respectfully said, okay, well, we're going to have to move along or we have to do something else then. And my dad started to listen to me. We started to do what? Add more life. Remove all the interference that's going on here, allow more expression of life, allow that body to start to heal again, right? We started working on his emotional state. Because you think the emotions are important to work on? Absolutely. We started working on his eating habits. You think that's important to work on? Absolutely. So we started working on life flow, how much life is flowing through here, and lifestyle. And you combine those two together, you get a longer lasting and healthier lifespan, right? We all agree? Of course. That's how it works. So we started doing that. And within the first three months, my father got off his diabetic medication because we took his hemoglobin A1C from 10.1 down to 5.9. That's your blood sugar levels measured over a three-month period of time because we put them on our sprint set protocols, right, which is the weight loss system I was talking to you guys about that we have in our office, okay? And within five years, he, he came off of all of the medications that he was on. He was on 11. He went from 11 down to zero. Is that a big deal? It's a big deal. It's a big deal. And now my father just celebrated his 70th birthday. He went to Barcelona with my mom. They had a great time. And what else does he get to do? More importantly, he gets to play with his grandkids. He gets to chase them around. He has the energy to do that. Isn't that what life's about? Because I know you. You have something that you want to be able to do better than you're currently doing right now, yes? That's why you're here. That's why you're here. Because we've got to figure out how to get you there. How to get you from here to here. Because we know, look, life is not linear, right? It's not, hey, I'm born, and this is life, and then this is exactly how life is going to be. It's not a straight line, is it? No, it's usually like this, and then it starts to decline. Boom. Right? Well, what we see is that people come like this, and they're starting on the decline, and all of a sudden they come above that line. Who wants more of that? Let me see a show of hands. Of course, it better be everybody in the room. Everybody wants more of that, right? No matter how healthy you think that you are, you could always become even healthier. I'm always striving to become a healthier version of me, a less stressed version of me, right? A better husband, a better father, a better leader in my office, right? I'm always striving, how do I become even better? And that's what everybody here must do, not should, but must do every single day of your life. What's that next best iteration of myself going to be saying to this self right here? Because if I keep doing exactly what I'm doing right now, what's my life going to look like three years from now? Worse. Not the same. What's it going to look like five years from now? Even worse. How about ten years from now? If you make it that much, you're right. And that's it. Why would you even want to live that way? Why would you want to be carrying that burden, right? So it's how do we, how do we get back to our sacred place? And you know what that is. Everybody has their own. Everybody knows what that light is inside of them when they truly were functioning at their best. Yes? And you all deserve that. And you're all worthy of that. And I can tell you that because, look, I see, I see the craziest things happen. I'll see a child who comes in to me who had four brain surgeries by the age of one and had fluid like this, right? And now they want to do a fifth brain surgery. And the parents are like, we can't do another brain surgery on my baby. She's going to die. She's, she's, she's weak. She's weak. And they want to go do a fifth brain surgery. And then they get, she, they get, that baby gets referred into our office because their family members who were suffering with a lot of ADD, ADHD challenges going on, right? Which was really coming from the upper cervical area going on right here in your cervical spine. And we, we see that child right there all of a sudden, after being under our care, not have another brain surgery, and it's been four years later. It shows you about the greatest doctor in the world, and it's not me. It's a doctor that lives where? inside, as long as there's no interference. See, what happens, and what happened to that child, I believe, is that when she was born, they were really yanking on her head when they went to get her out. And we know when a baby is born, it's a vaginal birth or a C-section, and they are pulling on the baby's necks. Not intentionally trying to hurt the baby, but it's what ends up happening, right? Or it's a C-section, and they're yanking to get the baby out. And what happens is many of the times, you'll see issues that happen in the upper cervical issue, which will lead to things like auricular infections that are common, or acid reflux, or allergies, or asthma, or ADD, ADHD, or anxiety, or Asperger's, and could even lead to autism. You see that? 
And that's happening right at the upper cervical region. And we'll see that so often with these children. And what letters am I on? Just the A's. I didn't get through the alphabet. And I see this so very frequently. And one thing for me is I don't ever want to see a child have to suffer when a child doesn't need to suffer. I have three children. I love my children. And I love all of, you know, all children. And for me, it's so vitally important for every child, every child on this planet, every person on this planet, to get this nervous system checked and get it checked properly. You hear what I said? Get it checked properly. There's a lot of people who think that they've got it checked and then they, they haven't. Or they've got it checked one time and then it was never remeasured throughout. And I go, okay, well, what are you doing then? Because you always want to be able to monitor it, right? Just like you monitor and you get your blood work done. Just like you go to your dentist to get your teeth checked, right? It's the same exact thing when it comes to our nervous system. We must get it checked. See how well is it truly running? And there's nobody better than our type of center that's going to be able to do that. Now look, I got to tell you. For me, I told you that I was studying to become a medical doctor, right? I was 20 years old, studying to become a medical doctor. And uh, me and my friends, we got on our motorcycles and we started driving down a major highway. And as we were driving down this major highway, my friends got off an exit and I missed it. So I pulled over onto the shoulder of the road. And as I pulled over onto the shoulder of the road, I'm sitting there. Now I'm looking over to my right and my friend Mike hops off his bike and starts walking towards me. And as Mike starts walking towards me, I see Mike's arms go like this in the air. And as Mike's arms go like this in the air, his face changes of fright. And as his face changes of fright, whack, I get hit from behind from a car at about 35 miles an hour. I get thrown off my motorcycle and I hit the pavement. And as I hit the pavement, my flesh literally starts to rip. My head got split open, my helmet came off, my head hit the pavement. And my head split open just like that. My knee was split wide open. I herniated six discs in my spine and bulged three. I had nine disc issues going on. Major challenge. I'm exactly where I needed to be, the hospital. Read me on painkillers, muscle relaxers, anti-inflammatory steroids, everything that I needed to be on at the moment. Come out of the hospital after being there for some time. And they say, okay, go see surgeons. And I go see surgeons, the best surgeons, right, in the world we have, New York City. I go there, they don't even know where to begin. I come out of there, I go see my neurologist, my orthopedist. They put me on more what? Meds. Come out of there, and then they send me to pain management. What do they do? More drugs. And they inject me with drugs, right? Today we have an opioid epidemic, right, which are leading to people turning to heroin, yes, and then dying. And I'll tell you, I was down that path. I was down that path. Every single day, I had bites like migraines running through my head. I felt like I had bars running through my, my head like this, squeezing them. I couldn't breathe. Pain level 0 to 10. I'm at 1,000. OK? I'm going into spasms all the time. I drop down on my knees. My mother and father are peeling me up off the ground like a banana peel. Every single day, mom and dad, like a 20-year-old, peeling you off the ground like a banana peel. After you go through this for some time, right, over a year, all of a sudden you get put on antidepressants because everywhere you go, everybody's frightened to even look at you because they don't know what to do. And I felt like, oh, there's no hope for me. And now I'm on antidepressants, and antidepressants made me suicidal. And I'm this close to taking my life. I locked myself up into a dark room. And then by the grace of God, I got led to a corrective-based chiropractor who showed me that you're not going to push darkness out by adding more darkness. The only way you're going to do is by adding more light, more God's love, and more God's healing for you. And I was so skeptical. I was so skeptical. I was so closed off to it. I said, come on. I've been everywhere. I've been everywhere. But I gave it a shot. And within three months, I had my first glimpse of hope. Six months, I had a little bit more. And within one year, I regained most of my life back. See, I didn't choose this profession. It chose me. It chose me. And it's been a mission and a passion of mine to help people like you every day of my life. And this is why, look, when I, when I, when I tell you, oh, yeah, I've been on media, I don't do this to impress you. I do this because, for me, that's been a mission to make an impact on people's lives because they've been fed with so much of the outside in when it really it's an inside-out job. 
And if we ever need the medications, they're there for last resort. But we shouldn't take them as first resort. That's all I'm saying. You get it? And when I went through what I went through and came out of that, that darkest moment, the biggest tragedy in the world became the biggest gift in the world for me. And it's impacted many lives because of what happened to me. And it's a calling. You know, it's been a calling. And I, I've, I have a, an entire team that's there to serve you. And I, I, go around, I go around the country speaking and empowering all doctors of all walks of life, even some of your medical doctors, yes. And you'll see some of your medical doctors in our office as well. And they're getting well. And their family members, you'll see it. Because they begin to understand the big idea that the power that made the body has the ability to heal the body. Get it? Before I said, hey, who wants more energy? Who wants to be able to, to, who wants to, be able to sleep better? Who wants to, to move better? Who wants to overcome this pain? Who wants to let go of all these challenges that are going on? Who wants to let go of all that heaviness that they've been carrying around all day long and wants to learn how to truly surrender it? And I saw everybody raising their hand. Well, that's great. Because we're going to show you exactly how you can do that in your life. Exactly how to do that. And walk side by side with you in doing that. But the first step is what? Coming in and getting checked. Step one, right? Really simple. We're going to come in and we're going to get checked. And the other thing that we're going to do is when we get you checked, if you have family members that, that you love and that you care about, if you've got children, if you've got family members, what are you going to do? You're going to get them checked as well, right? Because it's important for everyone that you love and that you care about to be able to get checked. It's that vitally important. Now, some of you are thinking, oh, hey, Doc, could, could I bring somebody to a dinner? Yeah, we'll, we'll create that opportunity for you. Or can you come and speak to, at my workplace? Yeah. And even if you work at a hospital, yes, I come and do talks at hospitals too, right? I talk everywhere. I talk to your churches. I talk to your groups, your organizations. I talk to Fortune 100 companies all the time. You might have heard some of them, like Google, right? Yeah or BMW, right, or AT&T, right, or all these companies. Yeah, I've spoken at them. And I am willing to do that for people because it's about making an impact in their lives. And that's what it's all about. And it's never about me. And if you have family members that live in other states, you let me know and I will find somebody for them. Because it's not about me, it's about who? You. It's about you. Now, you'll come into the office and what's gonna happen is when you come in, you're gonna have an examination with one of my doctors and they're going to run a very advanced computerized technology that's going to assess how well your nervous system is functioning, operating, responding, right? After they do that, then if pictures are necessary, then we're going to take some x-rays. And we're going to measure things to find degrees. Now, our units, right, some people go, oh, I don't want x-rays. Well, let me tell you something. If you watch TV for seven minutes from a distance from me to this young lady, you're going to get more exposure than you will from getting x-rays in my office, OK? We have a, we, our, our units don't give a ton of radiation, okay? All right. Next thing is, is we're going to assess your posture. We're going to take a look at that. We're going to take a look at what's going on with the structure of your spine. Is it broken down? Is it degenerating? Is it decaying? How long has it been going on for, right? And what are the habits that you've been doing that have been stopping you from getting to where you want to get to, right? And then what areas of your life are being affected? And where do you want to get to and how fast do you want to get there, right? And then based on that, you'll come back and then you're going to meet up with me. And you're going to spend some time with me. You're going to spend about an hour and a half with me, okay? And after you do that, because we got to go over your results and we got to explain to you on how to read your examination, how to really understand, because I don't want you to go there and go, I don't know what I'm looking at. You're just telling me a bunch of things. I want to be very thorough on what I teach you. And once you learn, and then we go in, into the room and go over your results, you're going to have a clear vision of what's going on with your life. And then based on your goals and our findings, are going to be based on the plan of action that I may recommend for you. Now, if I may, I may also recommend that you may need to see somebody else outside of me. Okay? I will do whatever is right for who? For you. Okay? Now, typically to have all of that done, right? Meet with the doctors. Meet with me. Spend that time. Run the examination. Do all of that. Typically in our office, to have an, a thorough exam like that, Cost up to seven hundred dollars, depending on the on the person, up to seven hundred dollars, right? But what we're doing tonight is we're giving back to a a donation. We're giving a donation to a cause, right? 
And that's why everybody here is eating a complimentary dinner, right? And the cause is going to go to a foundation called the Gift of Life Foundation. Anybody ever hear of that? So it's children in need that actually need a heart surgery. And this is like where they absolutely need it, 100%. And what I do is I ask for you to give a $40 donation. I don't keep a penny of it. And it goes to who? The children in need. I give back. And then you get to come in, have the examination in my center, and I'm the one who takes the expense. You don't. For you to come in and get checked to see what's going on with your health. And then if it's the right fit, then we move on to the next step. And if it's not, at least you walk away with a ton of knowledge on what's going on with you. Yes? To me, it's the greatest gift in the world. You can't get that anywhere. You really can't. And if you want to bring your entire family to come in, and that's your immediate family, right? Like your wife or your children, not your aunts and your cousins, and okay? Because people always try to do that, right? I ask you to just double that donation for your entire family. So instead of being 40, make it 80, right? Now, what it'll also include is you to be able to come in and also have your body composition analysis, which is also going to take a look at, hey, what's my weight? What's my body fat? What's my body mass index? What's my water percentage? How much visceral fat do I have? What's my bone mass? What's my metabolic age? Because I may be 30 years old, but my metabolic age may say I'm 50, right? So we will look at those markers, and you'll get to meet with one of my experts as well on that aspect of it as well, all for that, all for that donation. All right, so everybody has sheets on their table, right? And on those sheets, there are, there are times on the back here, and there are days. What I want you to do is I want you to circle the best day and time, right, that's going to work best for you this week. And if this week absolutely doesn't work, then we'll make an exception for next week uh, for you to come in and get checked. But just circle what times work best for you there, and my team will come around and they will get you all scheduled. Take a deep breath all in, everybody, all the way in. All the way out. Ah, good, one more time. Deep breath all the way in. And all the way out. Ah. And if we need to make a special time because one of these don't work for you, we'll figure that out with you, okay, tonight. All right, God bless you all. Enjoy your dinner, break bread with everybody. All right.